Have you ever... Wait, why am I... Why is it so dark? <sighs> so have you ever... Sincerely, I mean like actually sincerely thought you were about to die like not necessarily in the next few seconds but like in the next week or in the next month like you thought you were whatever was happening to you whatever you're going through would be the death of you you were not going to make it and this is it this is the end and then did you ever try to convince yourself to use those last few precious days and moments to make some video essays. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> so I've been thinking a lot about productivity and prolificness and uh, difficulty making art in uh, stressful times, and it reminded me of a Charles Bukowski poem, this guy, this book, and it's called So You Want to Be a Writer. <clears throat> if it doesn't come bursting out of you in spite of everything, don't do it. Unless it comes unasked out of your heart, in your mind, in your mouth, in your gut, don't do it. If you have to sit for hours staring at a computer screen or hunched over your typewriter searching for words, don't do it. If you're doing it for money or fame, don't do it. If you're doing it because you want women in your bed, don't do it. If you have to sit there and rewrite it again and again, don't do it. If it's hard work just thinking about doing it, don't do it. It just it, it goes on like that for a bit. I think you get the gist. I hate this poem. I don't like that poem. I love Bukowski occasionally, sometimes. Not this time. No, Charlie. Sorry. Sorry, Charles Bukowski. No, I don't like it. Because it's coming from a very privileged perspective of things come naturally to some people, and if it doesn't come naturally to other people, then never try it. Never do it. Uh, art is hard for me. Art is difficult for me. I have a lot of trouble with it. Uh, it's hard work. A lot of anxiety. A lot of dread. Dread's a good word. That's a big word dread and that's that's in normal times uh it, believe it or not these last seven eight months have been unnormal times so as you probably know i had presumed positive covid back in march uh it kicked my ass but i got through it i'm still kind of feeling some lung stuff it's not the best but i turned my life around started exercising a ton started getting on a nice work schedule started reprioritizing all the stuff that really meant something to me uh and then we went for a nice vacation we went camping if you saw the vlog it was so nice it was so relaxing i loved it i was feeling so productive and so re-energized so wonderful and then the bad then bad Turns out some bugs got into my duffel bag, uh, and when I got home, I put on a pair of socks from that duffel bag, and when I took off those socks, uh, I don't know, 10 hours later, I found two little, teensy tiny little seed ticks. They look like ballpoint pen dots on, it, on my foot. So tiny. We removed them immediately. They weren't on there for that long. I thought it was fine. It wasn't fine. It was very not fine. Turns out there's this thing called Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Turns out it is the most lethal of tick-borne viruses, worse than Lyme disease, worse than I, other diseases. I don't know tick-borne things. I didn't know this until it tried to murder me. Luckily, I was on antibiotics early enough uh, that I didn't die from it. So there's that. I will give it that. There's that's the that's the silver lining to all this. I didn't quite die from it. I remain unmurdered. Put that on my resume. But the whole thing just kind of broke me. Just like mentally, emotionally, physically. All the things, all the ways you can break a person in half, except for I guess literally, was how I was broken in half. In twain, even. Where I was feeling productive and had a new lease on life before and getting all this stuff done, uh, suddenly I was just uh, traumatized and just felt like, like before I was like, oof, that was close, not gonna waste this. And then after the second time that I nearly died from a deadly disease, it's just exhausting, I guess. It's exhausting to nearly die a bunch. And I don't recommend it. And then started the depressive cycle of I'm not doing enough work and therefore I feel crappy about that and because I feel crappy I'm getting even less work done and because I'm getting even less work done I'm feeling even crappier and it just 
fall into this bottomless pit of just disappointment. Meanwhile, patrons are falling off, rightfully so, because I have been too much in this funk to post much of anything. I don't feel like live streaming as much as I usually do, because again, I nearly died and I'm trying to figure stuff out. So all of this got me thinking about Jeff Mangum from Neutral Milk Hotel, my favorite songwriter of all time. Uh, and he quit music back in like 1998 because he had this sort of breakdown. His partner had recently told him about a sexual assault that she was the victim of and it affected him so thoroughly and it was so upsetting and he dealt with it the way he dealt with all of his problems which was writing a song about how he was feeling. And he wrote this song called Little Birds, which is actually this song that you are hearing with your ears. The song was so much darker and more disturbing than anything he had ever written that it actually just made him feel worse writing the song and performing the song. And he had this realization that it, sometimes you, it, art is not enough to help you cope with what you're coping with. And you have to find other ways to do that. And you have to maybe put art on the side for a bit. Here, here's a clip of him talking about it. I had, I had a little bit of a nervous breakdown, but it was a very wonderful thing to have happen to me. And I mean that sincerely. And uh, so we, I don't, it's, so yeah, it was really a good thing after a while. At first it was a real drag. But there's just certain things that you can't sing your way out of and so you gotta put that aside or you will get really fucked up. So that's what I did, in case anybody's wondering. And it's it's really good that he, he took this step back and figured this stuff out and just walked away from music for a bit, for a while, longer than I would ever like to walk away from make stuff. But he he went the healthier route. He went the, the, the smart route. I mean, this was from a time where Kurt Cobain was still on everyone's minds and his not being able to cope with all the awful things that he was dealing with. And you just have to take a step away for a bit and figure out why you like doing art and doing the stuff you do. And so that's been my life recently. I've been trying to get back into a decent groove I've been trying to stay healthy, I've been trying to focus on what matters, and I've been getting myself excited about make stuff stuff again. And it's worked, and I've, I've actually, I'm coming out with a video that is sort of an expansion upon all of these thoughts, all of this rambling, uh, and I'm working on, I, I'm literally at least halfway through four different videos right now. I've just been working on all the parts that I love, mostly all the research and all the writing and all the aesthetic stuff. Uh, and I am finally feeling, you know, up to tackling all the heavy lifting of the editing and the, uh, the clip finding and all that nightmare. All that nightmare. So yeah, uh, thank you for hanging in there with us. It's been a year, huh? Huh? It's been a year. It's been less than a year. It's been less than a year. 2020 has been less than a year. How? What? What were the before times? Do you remember? Does anyone remember at this point? I don't remember. I don't remember anything. I don't remember what faces look like. I don't remember sun. What is out? Um, what's a mall? What's a mall? A bar? No. Nothing. Nothing exists anymore. Nothing exists anymore. Keeping it positive here. <laughs> so yeah, I have a game plan, uh, and I am feeling stronger, and I'm feeling better, and I'm feeling healthy. For once, for once, I'm feeling healthy, and I am feeling sincerely excited to make art again. So I'm going to close this out with a caveat, because I usually say go make stuff. I'm going to say go make stuff for yourself for a bit. That's the new thing that I'm going with here. Go make stuff for yourself and also get healthy, stay healthy, be happy. Health is not just your body, it's your brain, it's all of it. And don't put it all on your art or other people's art because there's just certain things that you can't sing your way out of. That's it. I'm gonna turn this, I'm gonna turn this off again. I like this mood. Ooh, Halloween.